Hello and welcome back to our video lectures for chapter 7. In this lecture we are actually going to cover plant assets and intangibles. We are not going to be covering natural resources. So let's start with our first objective which is to measure and account for the cost of assets. So um, here we have long-lived assets. They're also known as fixed assets and related expenses. Normally plant assets we call property, plant, and equipment. Remember that, that land is not depreciable. There is no depreciation on land. And then we see any related expense account and there is no depreciation. As you can see, all the other ones have depreciation. Natural resources, the expense is called depletion. We are not going to be covering natural resources, so we're gonna move on to intangibles, which the expense is known as an amortization expense. So this is a very good synopsis of the various income statement accounts and their related balance sheet asset account. So what we need to know is that the cost of any asset is basically the sum of all the costs that we incurred to bring the asset to the intended use. So that's the key here. So we can not only use the price, but then any taxes that we paid, any commissions we paid to acquire that asset only at the beginning, at the onset, right? Once we put it into use, we can't continue to expense, for example, repairs and maintenance, that's considered an expense. You can't add that to the cost of the asset. So this is usually at the time of acquisition that you can do that. And you wanna make sure that any cost that you're able to uh, capitalize, which means capitalization, so to capitalize, means that we're actually moving it to the balance sheet. So instead of expensing it, we are making it an asset. So we're making it capital. So land, we have several costs, and you would need to know this for your exam. <coughs> the purchase price, again, commissions. With land, you have survey and legal fees that you have to do. And if you paid any um, backed property taxes or anything for clearing or removing unwanted buildings, all of that um, costs can go into the cost of the land. So let's look at an example. What we're gonna look here is I always like to read the question to know what I'm looking for so that way as I'm reading, all of that superfluous information I don't read. So here FedEx, we sign a $300,000 note payable to purchase 20 acres of land. We also pay $10,000 on real estate commission, $8,000 on backed property taxes, $5,000 for removal of an old building, a $1,000 survey fee, and $260,000 to pave the parking lot. And we did this all in cash. So what we're doing here is we're trying to see what the cost of the land is. So the $300,000 becomes our purchase price, and the commissions were $10,000, and they told us that right here. Then we have $8,000 for the backed property taxes, $5,000 for the removal of the building, and 1000 for the survey and zero for the 260 because that's to pave the parking lot so that doesn't really have anything as the cost of the land so that's the key here you want to be careful that you didn't include that um, 260 to pave the parking lot that's not considered the cost to bring the land to use you could still use the land without paving the parking lot so make sure you're aware of that so now we want to record all of these expenses because we want to make sure that we're, you know, it's properly recorded in our books. So now we're to record the purchase of the land. We're going to do the price that we came up with, the 324. Then we do have the note payable of 300,000, and then we have cash of 24,000 that we paid for all of that. So, so just make sure you use notes payable here, as they told us in the example. Now moving on to building machinery and equipment, we have the cost of constructing a building has fees that we can include in the cost. So architectural fees, permits, contractor charges, payments for material labor and overhead. This is direct material, direct labor and manufacturing overhead when you're using, and we'll talk more about this in managerial accounting, but for now, any labor material and overhead associated with erecting the building is included and interest. This is on the money that you borrowed to finance the construction. So students tend to forget that. So interest normally isn't something that you can include as a capital asset, but in this case, if you're taking out a construction loan, that interest can be included in the price of the building. 
Now, cost of purchasing a building, so now we're not, make, we're not actually making the building, would be similar to land, right? We have the price, the commissions, sales, and other taxes paid, and then expenditures to repair and renovate the building for its intended use. So before, you know, if you're trying to get like a certificate of occupancy and you need to make sure there's fire extinguishers or certain doors and proper exit and proper, and proper handicap access, all of those expenditures when you acquire the building can be included in the cost. So equipment, again, purchase price, don't forget to reduce it for the discounts. Then you have transportation from the seller and insurance you can add, because obviously if you're gonna purchase a big piece of equipment, you wanna make sure it's insured so when it gets there safely, taxes, commissions, installation costs. So now this is a, sometimes students forget. Because we purchase the equipment, we may need to install it. We are allowed to put that as part of the cost. And then anything that we need to do to test the asset before it is in place and any special platforms. So these two are normally um, you know, new for students, so make sure that you keep that in mind. So installation and expenditures to test before you put it in use are all allowed to be included as part of the cost of the building. For land improvements, we have driveway, signs, fences, and sprinkler systems. So this can decay, and so these land improvements can be depreciated. So land is not depreciated, but land improvements is depreciated. Okay, so make sure you note that. Leasehold improvements basically improve the property and they are depreciated over the lease term. And now normally leases for apartments last one year, but in commercial areas, it's three to five year leases. I would not recommend signing more than a five year lease. So then we have lump sum or basket purchases of assets. And here you're like purchasing a whole bunch of assets for just one price. And what we do here is we take the total cost and it's based on their market value. And this is called the relative sales value method. So in this case, we're getting like a whole bunch or a lump sum or we're getting a basket purchase and we're paying one cost for, for, for these items. And so we need to make sure we do market value here, not cost. So here, when we purchase the land in a building, the building sits on two acres of land and the purchase price of the land in the building, the total price is 2.8 million. And an appraisal indicates that the land's market value is 300,000 and the building is 2.7. But as you can see, that's three uh, million, not 2.8. So how do we go ahead and account for this? You take the total market value of the 3 million and you divide it. So each individual asset, you divide their market value by the total. So this 300,000 and then so 300,000 divided by is 10%. Of, so land is 10% and the building is 90%. So what you do is you multiply that and you move that into your total cost. So you should have this in Excel. You can add that to your Excel template and, and you can have these would be your row headings and make sure you have your formulas in like these would be the sum formula here. These would be the divide formula, right, with the little slashes and the multiplication, you know, is an asterisk. So make sure that you put this in Excel. I would pause the video here to do that. So if we pay cash for this entry, this is what you would have to record. You'd record the land at the 280,000, the building at the 2.5, not this amount. Remember the market value is what we're using to get the percentage. This is what we paid. So you wanna make sure you record it at the 2.8 and with the cash, cash is going down. So it is a $2.8 million out of cash. So at this point, I would recommend that you go ahead and produce the previous slide into Excel and then let's try to work out this problem. So here we're dividing a $120,000 lump sum purchase price for, we have now three assets, right? Land, building, and equipment. So we're going to account for these three assets as part of our total price. And then our market values respectively. So we have 40, 90, and 15. So we have 150,000. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the 40,000 and divide it by the 150 to get 26.7. And then when we multiply that 26.7 by our total cost of 120, the allocation to land is 32,040. For building, we do the same thing. We take the 95,000 and multiply it by the 150. So this would be 95,000 divided by the 150,000 to equal 0.633.
and then we multiply that times 120 to get 75,960. Then we take the 15,000, which we're taking 15,000 divided by 150 to get 10%, and 10% times 120,000 is 12%. Note, your total here has to be 100, and your total here should be the total cost of the asset. So this will conclude our first video, and we'll stop here and then pick up on the next learning objective in the next video.